Good morning everybody, Silas back again today, and today is the day, the day of doom for this old building back here. He just brought his equipment in and dropped it off. They've got to do some work to the building before they can start tearing it down. I'll kind of show you guys that here in just a second. The reason why I'm not tearing this down myself, number one, is I just don't have time to do it all. I say that, but I'm probably going to film most of tearing this one down. <laughs> it's just fascinating to me, but the main issue is, is that up here, all of these roof joists are connected to the building next door. Now this wall here is a shared wall. This wall is actually part of the other building that we're saving. And this wall just goes up against it. And it's actually not even attached. You can see daylight through there. But all of these joists up here are attached. Each one of these is nailed together. So that's beyond my capabilities of dismantling that. So I don't want to touch that. I don't want to cause any serious problems. So I'm going to have a professional come in here and do it the right way. I disconnected the power this morning and I ripped out most of the copper wire. Some of it didn't want to cooperate, so I left it behind, but got about 30 or 40 pounds out of here. But uh, I think it's pretty much ready to tear down now. They built this building back in the 50s and they had parts in here and this floor went all the way across. But they built the roof wrong and it's always held water and it's leaked for probably at least the last 30 years. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty rough in here, but... You can still see this was built back in the days when all foreign cars, whether they were European or Japanese or whatever, all went on the same shelf. This is a really neat place back in the day. Even when I was a kid, it was still halfway usable. It's been pretty well empty and just a, a water mess for the last at least 20 years. And then on top of all that, it's built below ground level. So water actually comes into here when it rains a lot. This will hold about four to six inches of water inside this building because it's so far below ground level. So it would just take a fortune to fix this building. So we're just going to go ahead and tear it down fix the roof on the building next door and use this area for a car processing area to drain the fluids, pull the wheels, that sort of stuff. Right now they're going to get up on the roof. Obviously, it's no longer safe for me to be inside filming, so I'm going to go ahead and get the drone back out, do a little bit more flyovers, and then I've actually got some work i got to do. So I'll go do that for a little bit, and then I'll come back up here and see what they're doing. I wish I had a thumb like that on ours. That's a heavy duty one right there. We just got that little flimsy one. Maybe someday. This machine's a little bit bigger than ours. Here we go. There we go. That's looking good. Yeah, just a little bit of repair work up there on that corner. He's trying to separate the concrete from the rest of it because the concrete we can send to the landfill for free. All the wood and everything else we're going to have to pay to get rid of. So if we don't have to pay to get rid of all this heavy concrete, that would be great.
Ooh, man. It's looking quite a bit different, that's for sure. I'm not 100% sure what his game plan is on that second level in there, and then where it's still attached to the other building. I'm not sure, I know he's just gonna go ahead and finish tearing down this side of the building, and then do the other half later. I'm not sure exactly how he's gonna do it though. You know, it's kind of a shame all that good lumber in there. I mean, look at that stuff, that's real good lumber. But we offered to give it to so many people. So many people said they wanted it, and we told them all, come on, come get it, you can have it all, as much as you wanna take. And, Nobody came and got anything, so away it goes. Can't wait forever for free stuff. I'll tell you what, that looks weird. <laughs> this building has been here for so many years. We figured this building was probably built in the 50s. I don't know if I mentioned that already or not, but that's what we're kind of guessing. I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> Thank you. 
check out all these labels. You can see where he marked aisles. They spelled aisle wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there wasn't islands there. Slowly but surely, whittling away at it. Got to take it nice and slow, cut one or two at a time. It's working out pretty good though. What's crazy about this tin is it wasn't leaking along the seams. This stuff here is still nice and sticky. Where it was leaking at is the places where it was rusted out, where it held water. And it finally just rusted all the way through. Like these over here. And the water just started coming through that. They put these drains in years and years ago thinking that would help. And it helped for about a year or two and then it didn't help anymore. Well, they are done for the day. They're supposed to bring that dumpster back and set it off. They'll set it back in here. I don't know if he's going to put a load of tan in it next or if he's going to put more trash in it. So I guess we'll have to find out in the morning. But made quite a bit of progress today. Got this half about done other than that back wall. And then got the about half of the upper story off of that one there. Looks pretty crazy in here though. I don't, I don't really know what to say. It's kind of speechless. He got the majority of the roof off of this side over here into one dumpster that was just a little bit left over. So this side here, we have about the same amount of wood up top, and then we have about the same amount of wood through here. So it's probably gonna take at least two more dumpsters to get rid of all of it. And then we have all these shelves in here as well, so it might end up taking three dumpsters to get rid of all of the trash. I'm not sure how many dumpsters of concrete are gonna go out, but probably I'm just guessing uh, that dumpster out there is about a quarter of the way full already, so probably looking at about four to five dumpsters of concrete as well. Well, everybody's gone. They got a new dumpster set here. Got all the equipment parked in here. My dad had to go get those panels. He forgot to bring them with him. <laughs> he was here a minute ago, but he left them at the other yard. So he went back to get those. So I'm gonna hang out and wait for him, see if he can make it back before I have to leave. If not, I guess I'll go ahead and head out. But uh, either way, I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. One cool thing that's really good for him is that this has a concrete floor in it. So he's got a skidster in there now with the bucket and he's able just to scoop everything up super, super easy, shove it over there to his excavator so he can pick it up. And whatever's left over at the end, he can kind of scoop up and shove up against what's left of the concrete wall. Super easy cleanup. This whole roof is pretty rotted up here. This whole roof here, there's certain spots that aren't even safe to walk on. <laughs> it's pretty rotted up here. It's been rotten for a long, long time. You can see all the spots that held water. Like there was a spot, there was a spot, there was a spot. You can kind of see them all, but most of the spots that held water were right along the middle back here, where, and especially where that back building was, because this building here, you can kind of see, has a little bit of a slope this way but that back building sloped the opposite direction. There was just no way of real realistically saving that building. Only way we could have done it is to build a whole new roof up here over the top and angle it all the way back, kind of build it up at the front and let it slope all the way to the very back of the building. The problem is, is a lot of these two by 12s or two by 16s, whatever those are, were already rotted down there at that end. So they would have had to been replaced and that's just, you were looking at lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money to be able to fix the roof on the whole thing. And then that back half was below ground level anyway. 
Plus, we need an area to process cars a little bit better that's away from the crusher. I don't like processing cars right next to the crusher. It makes me nervous sometimes. So really, this is what's best for our business. I know a lot of people are all about save it at any cost, as long as it's your cost and not my cost. <laughs> but we're not all about that. Once this back half is completely done and that rest of that wall over there and everything is gone, they're gonna come back up here. They're gonna go ahead and clean off most of the rest of this roof here, take it down. I don't know if they're gonna go all the way to the two by 12s. I keep calling two by 12s. I think they're actually two by 14s or 16s, but I don't know if they're gonna go all the way down or if they're just gonna take off all the rubber and leave the wood, what's left of the wood anyway. I don't know exactly what their plan is, but we'll let them decide on all that. That's gonna be about a week or two down the road. One more. There it went. Boom. Well, we've got a couple issues now we gotta figure out. All of these are pocketed into the concrete and they have to come straight out because if they come sideways or twist at all, they bust the concrete. So we gotta figure that out and then we gotta take all these rails out. Here's the test. It's kinda spooky. Not gonna lie. Because if it doesn't go right, it's going to tear up the wall in that other building. So. <laughs> Stairs are gone. So far, so good. Seems to be working. It's kind of spooky. Look at that whole thing's moving. He's trying to pluck them out one at a time, but they're just still nailed together pretty good. Just not cooperating. Yeah, this wood's just in a lot better condition than the wood that was on the roof. There it went. There we go. Wow, this looks absolutely crazy. 
Absolutely crazy. He's gonna gather up all the wood now, pack it in the dumpster, see how much he can get in there. And by then it'll probably be about lunchtime, but I'm assuming after lunch he's gonna go ahead and knock this wall down. And I'm not sure how he's gonna do that. I do have to run one errand, so uh, hopefully I make it back before he tears this wall down. <laughs> we, there's a chance we might miss that, but either way, you guys gotta see him tear down the rest of the walls at least. There it goes. <laughs> that is sketchy deluxe, but it's working. That's actually working way better than I thought it would. Well, that separated good. I was worried about that cap up top, but it came right apart. Boom, there we go. Very nice. But for real now, I've got to go, so I guess we won't get to see the rest of this, but you'll get to see it when I get back. Well, kind of a change of plans. I got back and they called and they said they could actually get my loader in to service it. I actually talked to them about a month and a half ago, something like that, about servicing this loader. And they said, well, they don't normally service case loaders. They usually just do combines and stuff. It's a local place. But I said, man, I, don't make me pay the case loader dealership in Wichita all, to come all the way over here. I don't want to have to pay that much money because it's like 200 and some dollars an hour plus a $400 service fee and just on and on and on. Whereas out there, they're like $150 an hour to work on it. So I said, would you please, we're a local business. We're right down the street from you. Would you please do it? And they said, okay, we'll let you know when we have an opening. They didn't give me much warning. They called me about 30 minutes ago and said, if you can get that loader here right now, we can get it done tomorrow. So <laughs> here I go. They're making pretty good progress in there. That wall is completely gone. They're tearing up the remainder of the other walls. They'll probably have all this concrete piled up ready to load here pretty soon. So looking pretty good. We're already almost there. It took us less than 10 minutes to get here. So it was even closer than I thought it was. Just right out there. This is Amish territory anyway. People are used to tractors driving down the highway. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. Well, they're on a roll right now. They're getting rid of all this concrete. It is so windy outside that I just cannot film anymore. It would be nothing but static in the mic. I was gonna fly my drone around and get a couple drone shots, but once again, we're having 60 mile an hour wind gust right now. So there's just not, a, I'm just a little bit nervous about taking my drone up in the air. I've taken it up in bigger wind gusts than that, but I just don't want to risk it. But he's got probably one more dumpster load of concrete to get rid of. I think they're gonna go ahead and get rid of it today and then they'll be done. They'll come get their equipment tomorrow. But with that, I'm gonna head out. I guess I'll come back in the morning and then I'll do a drone flyover and we'll close this out then. So I got back that morning and I got my drone out. I recorded this footage here. It looks totally different. I mean, radically, totally different. It looks awesome. And actually, even since I recorded this, it rained and washed that concrete off and it looks pretty cool. But anyway, I went there and I recorded this drone footage and then I completely forgot to close out this video. I got a phone call and I had to leave and so then I just completely spaced it off and never went back. So if you guys enjoyed this one, please give me a thumbs up on this video. I know this was a ton of fun to film. We've got lots of big things coming up, so stay tuned. And with that, I'll let y'all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day 
And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.